Hi, it's Barb, Meeple PhD, with another Cosmic Game Connection. Earlier this year, astronomers announced that they had been able to turn back the clock on a supernova explosion that happened in a neighboring dwarf galaxy known as the Small Magellanic Cloud. Using Hubble data that spanned almost two decades, they made what they claim is the most accurate estimate of the location and time of this star's demise. Supernovas occur at the end of a massive star's life, when its core runs out of the fuel it needs to hold up against the pull of gravity. At that time, the core collapses, which creates shock waves rippling through the outer layers that then causes them to explode out into space. Now, if we can catch one when it's fairly young, in the first couple few thousand years, and if it's close, we might just be able to map the stellar debris as it moves over a human lifespan. In this case, for supernova E0102, astronomers used Hubble data from 1995, 2003, and 2013. They were able to identify 45 different hot knots in each of those images. And by mapping the expansion of those hot knots over this time frame, they could figure out how fast they were moving. Using that information, they could rewind the clock and figure out where and when all of those knots would have been at the same place at the same time, thus tracking the origin of this stellar blast. And what they found is that this might have been visible from Earth about 1700 years ago, during the fall of the Roman Empire. However, it only would have been visible from Earth's southern hemisphere, and unfortunately there are no written records of anyone having seen such a star in the sky. When I thought about how these astronomers were able to play with space and time in order to figure out when that supernova occurred, the game that came to mind was A Thieves' Fortune. This is a card drafting and hand management game where all players are playing different futures of the same thief who had looted the royal palace and came away with a magical hourglass that allows them to glimpse their future. The game is set up with the board at the center of the table, the resources placed in their respective positions, and each of the three decks, the location, characters, and events, shuffled and placed nearby. Players each receive a score marker, and then three boards that represent their present selves. Then you're ready to begin. The game is played over five rounds, with each round having a planning, looting, action, and bribe phase. During the planning phase, players draw five cards, one from each of the three decks, and then any two of their choosing. They then draft these cards, placing their chosen cards into their future and putting the indicated resources on that card. During the looting phase, players pull resources off of cards from their future. Any card that becomes empty gets placed into their present but the present can only have four of each location, character, and event. If they need to place a fifth, the oldest card goes into their past. During the action phase, players go around the table, each taking one or two actions on their turn. These actions can include activating a character or an event, uh, spending time tokens to get resources from their future, or passing. Finally, when all of the players have passed for the round, they much eat, must each pay bribes, depending on how much danger they have accumulated on their board. At the end of the fifth round, players count up additional points from any cards in their past, and then one point for every five resources left over. The player with the most points is the best version of this thief's future. This exploration of a character's past, present, and future is what reminded me of Supernova E0102 and the way that astronomers were able to determine the past life of this stellar blast. So the next time you pull a thief's fortune to the table and you're moving a card from your present into your past, take just one second to think about the way that these astronomers were able to turn back the clock on a supernova explosion. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions about the science or the game I presented in this video, leave them in the comments below and I'll try and give them an answer. I'll be back again. 
be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you know when another video comes out. But in the meantime, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as at MeeplePhD, and you can find my blog at MeeplePhD.com. During the planning phase, players gra uh, draw five cards. They draw. They don't just grab. They draw them. They draw them off the deck. That's what that's called.